Today, I'm gonna to tell you how I help my families choose between a medium golden doodle puppy and a mini golden doodle puppy. It is all based on size. Do you live in an apartment in the city or do you love to go hiking three or four miles? Do you travel in an RV or are you a beach goer? All of these decisions we will tackle in this video. You might think that this room looks a little different and that's because it is. This is my best friend Caroline's house and I've been breeding for nine years and she's been helping me for the last three. So this week, these guys are three weeks old and they are working on sound stimulation. And so what that means is that we do some sort of stressful sound like a squeaker, a crinkle, but Caroline decided to do aluminum foil. And that is an awesome sound that I had never even thought of. So she put aluminum foil down and had, and like sat them on it. Not only does that make a sound when they move, but it also creates a different texture underneath their feet that provides a lot of sensory input. So it is a great way to work on those type of desensitization for these puppies. And she said the funniest thing happened. She said they just froze. Like they just sat there or stood there and they didn't know what to do. It took them, I got her Ruby, don't worry. It took them about two or three days to even consider walking on it. And now they can walk across it like a pro. So I told her I was definitely borrowing this idea and we are gonna do it on Raleigh's puppies when they turn three weeks old. In our program, many golden doodles are anywhere between 15 and 30 pounds. And there are so many great reasons to go with one of these guys. Oh my gosh, look at how cute this is. They are just so relaxed and just adorable. But one of the perfect examples of a great family is a family that we gave a puppy to eight months ago and they travel and do their work in an RV. They go all the way up and down the East Coast and it is the perfect example as to why a mini Golden Doodle works best for them. They need that small uh, size dog to travel with and to be able to go on walks and hikes with, but nothing that's too long, nothing that's too long of a duration. The activity level of a mini is a lot less than a medium. And plus in an RV, they only have a limited amount of space. So that mini size is perfect for them. They get their snuggle puppy and then they also get somebody who can go out and do activities with them. And in fact, they are gonna be traveling all the way to New Mexico in a couple of months to go watch the balloon festival. And I told them that they better get tons of video and photos of little Denver Rose out there enjoying that moment. So what type of activity does a medium golden doodle need? They need about 20 to 30 minutes, two to three times a day, compared to the 15 minutes that a mini would need. We don't always have to do activities outside. Now, some of our puppies, they love to be outside. Like one of our families, Merritt, he loves to play disc golf. He loves to play fetch in the water. And they said he even has built up to four miles on a hike. That is so impressive. And that fits exactly what their family likes to do. They said Merritt wants to be outside as often as possible. But not all families like to do activities outside all the time. So the great thing is, is that you can do, where are you going Ruby? <laughs> you can do activities with them that don't involve always like being outside on hiking. Oh, you're cleaning? Okay, here, look, I'll put them down, you clean. <laughs> you don't always have to go on a walk or a hike. You can play with bubbles, you can do a snuffle mat, or you could even do a puzzle. One thing that both types of dogs love to do, mini and medium golden doodles, is hang out by the water. A lot of our families have beach houses or lake houses or go on vacation to those places. And all of our families send us these greatest videos of dogs loving to swim or be in the water. And they look adorable with their little life vest on. Toby, one of our mini golden doodles, loves to ride on the boat with his human sister and his puppy sister from us. And then I have a great video of one of our puppies. She's on a mat that's in the water and she's just running back and forth with her owners in the water and she's barking at them and jumping in. I mean, you can't get a better life than that. Now, one thing that I have noticed is that all of my mediums and standards love to play fetch. In fact, Honey, she's only 16 weeks old and she loves to play fetch with everything. Sticks, toys, balls, you name it, she'll go get it. 
Bella, on the other hand, she's kind of outgrown it. She's 12 now, and she kind of looks at me like, why did you just throw that? But I want to know, do your minis like to play fetch? Because a lot of my families report that they love chewing on toys, but they don't necessarily love going and playing fetch with it. So I want to hear your stories, so comment down below if you think that your mini loves to play fetch. Now, both sets of golden noodles think that they are lap dogs. But the true lap dogs are minis. They love to be held, they love to be in your lap. And in fact, almost all golden doodle families will tell you that they will still hold their puppy like a baby. I mean, you can see Ruby only wants to be in my lap. She loves being held and snuggled. But medium golden doodles, they actually like to be beside you, resting their head on you, maybe even all their paws, like their front two paws on you but I think it's because they get hot more quickly. So at our house, every golden doodle that comes finds a place. Bella loves to be at JP's lap while he's at his desk. And Honey has found out that when she's out of her playpen, her spot is in the bathroom on the tile. But every mom loves to find a place where they can go and relax. And it's always on the tile or the hardwoods, maybe on the dog bed. But in the summer, it's usually on one of those cold surfaces where they can just relax and chew on a yak cheese. For those of you that have been following our potty tray journey, they got here on Wednesday at the port. So many potty trays and pee pads are coming that they had to manually put them in the container. So traditionally, a forklift would have come, picked it up on a pallet, stuck it in there. But they couldn't do that and get all of them in there. So they had to manually put each box in. So a huge ship brought them in. And on Wednesday, a big crane took one of our containers and lifted it off and put it onto an 18-wheeler truck. And now that 18-wheeler truck is on its way to us. And we just got word today that on Tuesday at 10 a.m., we get to start unloading those trays. So that means that on our end, we will have to manually take out every single box from that container and put it in our warehouse. But we are going to be putting shipping labels on those and getting them out that day to you guys. We are gonna be so excited to show you that next week. And then the other thing that I'm so excited about is that Maya is here. She came to us yesterday. We did her puppy count x-ray and they're showing seven puppies. So we are looking forward to a wonderful and healthy birth and showing you those puppies next week.